Designing large LED strip light installations requires techniques you don't need with small installations. This video explains how to apply those techniques to achieve success in large-scale low-voltage LED linear lighting projects. We'll be discussing constant voltage 12 and 24 volt DC circuitry. I assume you know how to avoid voltage drop and overloading your drivers. If you haven't seen our videos on those subjects, I recommend you watch them first. When designing large-scale low-voltage strip projects, you have to keep two principles in mind. One, separate the control and power lines. And two, put your decoders and drivers as close to the lights as you can. Let's talk about number one, separate the control and power lines. In a small-scale system, typically the dimmer or controller is driving the light strips directly. The controller or decoder outputs pulse width modulated or PWM signals directly to the strip. So the lights are strobed on and off quickly, with the ratio of on time to off time determining how bright the lights appear. An RGB controller is just a three-channel dimming system that mixes colors in a coordinated fashion that is made easy to use by a color dial or a comparable device. We sell a wide variety of controllers and dimmers that operate this way. One-channel dimmers, two-channel white adjustable strip controllers, three-channel RGB controllers, and Christmas light controllers. They're inexpensive and easy to install. You wire the controller or dimmer directly to the lights and power, and you can control the lights with knobs or buttons. But they don't work so well for large installations because, one, they have limits on how much load they can power, and two, voltage drop becomes a concern if you're using larger loads or wiring over greater distances. Let's see if we can overcome these limitations and design a larger system with a PWM output controller anyway. In this example, we have to use amplifiers instead of decoders because the signal simply isn't encoded. It's in the power lines that go to the strips. We haven't separated the signal and power lines. You can't have long wires between the controller and the amplifier without incurring some voltage drop. That's a big problem if the touchpad is on the wall and your lights are in the ceiling. We also find that amplifiers are worse than decoders in another important way. They increase the bottom end steppiness of dimming, which means that if you dim any of the channels, red, green, or blue significantly, the color can change abruptly at dimmer light levels, which causes color fade sequences not to be smooth. Another problem using amplifiers is that longer wire runs have parasitic capacitance, which causes your perfect square waves coming from the controller to look like the green lines below instead of the red ones. That can cause undesired visible effects. We sell the best PWM amplifiers money can buy, but for large systems it is better to separate the power and control lines by one, using DMX, or two, using one of our wireless controllers, which puts the control signal into the air, or three, using zero to 10 volt dimming, possibly in conjunction with wireless controls if you're only working with one channel. All three methods operate by sending control signals separate from power. This drastically reduces the current that needs to be carried on the control lines, which allows you to use low voltage cable or wireless and extend your installation much further without boosters or repeaters. Voltage drop is very dependent on the current carried, so cutting the current allows you to run much longer control lines. In the case of DMX, we use standard shielded XLR cable. In the case of 0 to 10 volt dimming, typical 22 gauge wire is probably adequate for most installations. In summary, keep the current on your control lines low by separating control from power. Let's turn to number two. Put your decoders and drivers as close to the lights as you can. Whatever connects to the strip has to carry a lot of power to create the light. Those are the connections that need to be short, or the long lines and large load will cause your lights to receive less than the 12 or 24 volt potential difference they might need to be fully bright. Here's an example of the two principles in operation. We put the decoder and the driver close to the lights. The 120 volt power cords can be very long. The DMX signal line is totally separate from power. It's carried on a shielded XLR cable from the controller to the first decoder and daisy chained through each decoder or other DMX device until the final device, where the line should be terminated to prevent reflections. Can you see how separating the signal and power lines lets us run long lines over to the lighting cluster which contains a decoder, driver, and lights? I mentioned three ways of achieving larger scale systems, and I'll go deeper into those in the next video in this series. I'll discuss DMX, wireless PWM, and zero to 10 volt systems in a bit more detail. If you remember these two principles when designing larger scale LED linear lighting systems, you should be able to achieve success. 
One, separate the control and power lines. Two, put your decoders and drivers as close to the lights as you can. Give Environmental Lights a call if you need any help. That's why we're here, to make you successful.